Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the all-new Harley-Davidson Iron 1200 and 48 Special. One with dark custom style and corner cranking performance, the other retro cool with modern swagger. Check out both of them at h-g.com slash sportster. And by Screaming Eagle Performance, enhance the look and feel of your Harley-Davidson with their powerful lineup of performance-enhancing upgrades. Check them out at ScreamingEagle.com. Number 25 out in front. He's about a half a lap ahead. He's about a halfway out. Checkered flag is out. Number 25 is your winner. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the all-new Harley-Davidson Iron 1200 and 48 Special. One with dark custom style and corner cranking performance. The other retro cool with modern swagger. Check out both of them at h-g.com slash sportster. And by Screaming Eagle Performance, enhance the look and feel of your Harley-Davidson with their powerful lineup of performance-enhancing upgrades. Check them out at ScreamingEagle.com. Semi-final number two coming up for our Groms. They're pulling up to the line. Okay. Nice. Okay. You like you like the read? The read was good. Okay, all right. It, I, no, I, I'm good with it. It just I kind of like hicked up one. You know, had a little hiccup. But if it sounded good to you, it's fine with me. Yeah, you know, right, 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 right. I, I'm good with it. I'm good with it, man. I'm I really. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, for six. Just, yep, yep, I'll be right here. I'll be right here, yeah. Okay. Yep, you bet, thanks.
standing next to my 2017 street rod Harley Davidson. Uh, we picked this thing up from San Diego Harley. So I had hard case performance do me some shorties, little stubbies, they're about two inches tall. And these are for, I believe, inch and an eighth bars, which are moto style bars. We use the Vortex flat track band, the tall, like super wide bars for flat track. I know they look crazy and like beach bars, but they work. So we always run the Vortex on there. And then hand guards, I always run the Cycra hand guards, which I honestly think these ones are discontinued. So we've been buying them up, but uh, they have a new version of this that works too, but I really like the older style. So that's how our handlebar setup is.
everybody to the Flat Out Friday pre-race show. A lot of things happening here. We're going to show you some good that's been happening all week here at Harley Davidson. We got the Mama Tried, we got Flat Out Friday, and that's where we're at. We're on course right now. I am Diana Dahlgren, your host for the pre-show, standing here with my lovely, handsome co-host, Lance Corey, X Games gold medalist, freestyle, and now we're here, Flat Out Friday. On these polished concrete floors, and these bikes are gonna be going fast tonight. That's right. There's gonna be a lot of things that are happening, but we're gonna go through four of these beautiful bikes that you see behind us right now. We had a build off, and I say it was supposed to be a bike build, you know, no competition, but then we all got together Wednesday night and we were like, no, this is a competition. There's four teams here. The brand new Sportster was unveiled Wednesday, so let's head on over, check them out, Lance. Let's check them out. All right, so we got our first masterpiece right here. Lance, take it away. All right, so uh, let them know your name. So I'm Charlie Stockwell from Wars Harley Davidson in London. I've been working with Milwaukee Harley Davidson this week building this HD Roadster. That's right, and uh, man. All right, so everybody that's in the crowd right now, you guys are watching, do you see these four beautiful bikes here? All righty, so what are we thinking so far? Are you guys liking the white on black? How are we think what are we thinking of Charlie's build so far here? So for all of you guys sitting here in the crowd live, we're actually on Facebook Live right now. We are doing this broadcast across hundreds and hundreds of channels, and uh, we wanted to showcase Charlie's build here. So let's talk about the key components of what we did here this week. Right, so first of all, we wanted to go with the flat track vibe. So we took the HD Roadster, we tuned it up with the Screaming Eagle Stage 4 kit, high level 202 exhaust, custom air cleaner. We changed the bodywork. This is kind of my signature style from my shop back in London, Wars Harley Davidson. We want to give a retro flavor to the, uh, the paintwork as well. So we've gone for a real retro and original Harley Davidson tank badge on there, running with the orange and the black, but on the white base. Dunlop flat track tires on 19 inch laced front and rear wheels. We've got the edge cut Harley Davidson at black engine covers as well going on in here. Absolutely beautiful machine. And what do you think about the ride? Did you get to ride it over here? I didn't get to ride it. You didn't get to ride it over here? I got to ride it. Oh my gosh, what did you think of it? It's all lovely. Awesome. Of course he did because it's built by you and it's beautiful. All the way from UK, give a big round of applause for Charlie. And moving on over to this beauty, I see some gold, I see some burgundy, and I'm loving it. All right, Brett Jaswinski, uh, tell us about this bill. Well, can I take this first? All right. <laughs> so, so basically, we uh, it started life off as a, uh, a 1200 custom and uh, transformed it to what you see here. Starting from, I guess, the front back, uh, it originally had a 16 inch front wheel on it. We took a, we upped the size up to a 21. We uh, threw six over uh, tubes on it, uh, shaved the fork lowers. Uh, let's see, coming around it. Oh, oh, who's? We've got uh, a bunch of Harley genuine PA parts. We have the brass collection. Uh, we've got the grips, fork cover, fork cap covers, air filter cover, uh, pegs, ignition cover, or timing cover rather. Uh, we wrapped the pies, we threw some Screaming Eagle. Uh, some Screaming Eagle uh, mufflers on it. Let's see. Ooh. Uh, we painted it. We powder coated the, the motor, the cam cover here, the sprocket cover, the, uh, the push rod tubes, the rocker boxes. Let's see what else. Uh, haven't gotten to ride it yet. I think the bike probably has less than like five miles on it total. So, yeah, no, it still has uh, a long life left ahead of it, hopefully. But then uh, a few other bolt on parts. We got the Burley brand uh, sissy bar. Uh, another Harley seat, and then Roland Sands design uh, bolt-on uh, license plate and uh, taillight. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. So what are you thinking so far of this build? Who here likes it? And for those of you watching on Facebook Live, make sure you give a thumbs up if we're liking what you see here. Moving on to the next one, Johannes Bartle from Ukes Harley Davidson. Absolute beautiful build. You know, you and I, we were going back and forth on the Harley Davidson Instagram. I mean, I, I'm, there's some pretty stiff competition between my team and your team. How did the overall build go for you? <laughs> so first of all, I want to thank Harley Davidson, the entire Ukes team for helping me out because this was the first time for me building a bike. Um, 
the entire journey was incredible. We had, I don't know, five or six phone calls, like conference calls with like seven different people. Um, and you know, so many different ideas and inputs. And then I was like, okay, cool. Can we do that? And they were like, of course. And I was like, great, awesome. Can we make it like very modern? Sure. I mean, it's a cafe racer, so they're like, you know, limits to it. Um, but they just went out of the way and we did it. Um, so one thing that I really want to point out, the headlight. Have, did you see that? I want to check it out. Look at it. It's just beautiful. You see the entire inside over here, and it's just kind of like a Terminator, you know, like a future bike. I really like the rear tail light, actually. Oh, yeah. oh that special part right here. Can yeah, we turn it on? I, uh, yeah, he's turning it on. I wish that you guys that are on the other side yeah, of the camera that. could see this. But anyways, the, the tail light is built into the fender. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, we have so many details in this bike. For example, over here, look at this, the dice, probably over, where is it? Here, <laughs> got one right here, where's the camera? <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot, but you know what? I'll let Rob take over and tell you more about like the, the, the details about it. <laughs> yeah, Go thanks. for it, Rob. Yeah, so we were tasked with coming up with a cool, modern, yet classic cafe racer. Um, and, and I think everybody's ideas really uh, show it, it turned out great. I can't say enough about it. That's awesome. What would you say is the most unique feature about this build? Oh, man. we There's so many. There's the headlight. Johannes, that's full credit to him. We had the, uh, the taillight flush mounted into the rear tail section. Um, the wheels, they make the whole bike stand out. Um, we, we had so many great ideas from the whole team, and it all came together. Awesome. Well, great job for Ux Harley Davidson. Give a round of applause for their build. And then moving over to our fourth bike. This one has a special place in my part because I was a part of this team. And uh, hey, was it raining outside when you had it over? Uh, you know, you got a break in a bike. It's, it's kind of not cool to bring a clean bike to a bike show. So. We did a couple burnouts once we found out it was running. Nice, nice. You got to break it in easy. Yeah, of course. That's in the maintenance catalog, I think. So I walked up to the bike and I saw bottle service. Can yes. you tell them what that means? Uh, we also brought the bottle to the party. We have a two and a half pound bottle of nitrous on the back. Okay. Uh, 60 shot at a time, third gear wide open. Bring nice. the party. Rad. Yeah, theme was bobber. So we had the new 48 special. We worked with House of Harley and we kind of ran with it. So we started with bobber and then turned it into send it. So once we decided to put nitrous on it, uh, the pinstriping really set it off. The guys from House of Harley crushed it. Uh, Rad. But one thing I know with that NOS bottle, I think you'll smoke these other three on there, right? Yeah, so it wasn't enough for us to have one thing. We wanted to have the most power. Uh, we wanted to be the most awesome. And we wanted to be the dopest. And I think, we, I think we crushed it. I think you did. So break us down the parts here. I, I mean, I see a, a mixture. Tell us exactly what happened here. I mean, I see some wrapping and uh, walk us through what we did here this morning. I mean, this bike, you guys, was in shambles this morning. It's quote unquote shambles. I mean, I say shambles. <laughs> it was completely taken apart. So to walk us through the build. So staff at House of Harley was at the dealership at 7 a.m. this morning, and they, everybody, it was a whole team effort to kind of put our ideas <laughs> into creation. So to start at the front, we have a Diana Dahlgren signature touch, accent stripe on the front that, wheel. Yeah, that's right. And then do you see my little action figure here with action fire figure, flames? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's right. It was inspired touch. <laughs> we wanted, with the 70s tank theme, we wanted to kind of bring a lot of 70s motorsport cues into it, kind of modernize the bobber concept. So we have an off-road inspired headlight, really tidy bars. Completely custom exhaust. Yes. Uh, which was completely custom to the point where they custom. were chopping and rearranging around this bike this morning. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I did a very important job of watching them do that. So a lot of talent on this. Listen, play. I just want to let everyone know here. Joe did a beautiful job of watching and directing what was happening. The build. You know, and the donuts weren't being eaten, so I That's figured right. I needed to help. Yeah, that's right. Well, we ate plenty of donuts. Well, the last couple things that were uh, beautiful on this bike was the touches of the bottle service. And we're calling this bike bottle service for that little service. hit of nitrous. We when called it a favor it. from Harley Davidson. They've been super helpful. So that was actually done by Paul Martin. 
awesome. a designer there. And the, we also use the PNA brass collection as a signature focal point of the whole bike and really just took all the stuff we know about sportsers from the last 60 odd years and sent it. Awesome. Well, it's a beautiful build. Round of applause. House of Harley Davidson. This build went down. Myself, Joe. Joe good, good job, Diane. Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of delicate Sean. Well, a lot of people. Anyway, so we have a lot going on here tonight. Lance, uh, like I said, we are live on Facebook. So wherever you guys are at, let us know what's happening on social media. That's right. Like right now so we can see you watching. And uh, if you're here in the stands, tell your family to tune in and watch what you're watching. That's right. And we also have a special guest, Brandon Holstein. Where is he at? Where are you? Brandon. Come on over here somewhere. Where is he at? They're sending him over here. Oh, there we go. He's wheeling it over. Hi, how are you? All right, everyone. Brandon Holstein has his beautiful bike behind us. All right, so where are you from, Brandon? Uh, I'm from Long Beach, California. All the way out from Long Beach. Um, as you can see, his beautiful bike, and, and we want to see if you guys are liking the bike. If you are, give us a thumbs up here on Facebook Live. Um, so let's get to know you a little bit more. So um, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, I am one of the owners of a company called The Speed Merchant, and we are one of Harley's uh, hooligan race teams. And so this is our race bike for this 2018 season. And what's it like being a part of the Harley hooligans? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of the older guys, so I try to stay out of the way of the young, fast kids. Yeah. Okay, uh, they want you to hold the microphone up a little bit more so yeah, all the sorry. Facebook fans can hear you. It's okay. So anyways, we have loads of teams going against. What is it like to come to these events and go up against your buddies and competitors? Uh, it's all fun. It's all fun. Whether you're first or last, as long as you're battling and having a good time, that's all. Is all there's happens. no one throwing blows after the races are over, or are we just heading to the bar having some drinks? Are you guys heading to the bar having drinks after the race? Or are we throwing We always blows? do, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So it's a good time. Yeah. All right, awesome. Who here is a fan of Brandon? Give him a round of applause. All right. We're going to take a closer look of his bike build. Take it away, guys, in the Facebook land. Honestly, nobody in my immediate family was into motorcycles, but somehow I was always drawn to it. I just knew that I wanted to be on two wheels. I think it was the freedom, hopping on a motorcycle and just riding, taking you wherever you want to go. Knowing that wherever you're going to go, it's going to be a killer journey. Signal Hill, California, and this is the headquarters of the Speed Merchant. This is where we design, package, ship, receive all of our products that we do for Harleys and other motorcycles. We've been focusing on the street rod that we're going to be racing this race season. So our main goal is to really just button up all the odds and ends. Fast J is going to be riding it this season, so we're going to be kind of fitting it up to him uh, as far as positioning, bars, foot controls, and all that. When I picked up the street rod and brought it back here, I literally just left it alone, didn't touch it. I didn't even ride it. I just looked at it and stared at it for a while to figure out what I wanted to do with it. But being me, I got to do something to it. So I decided to use a different tank, uh, a bolt-on tail section, dirt track tires, some handlebars but leaving a lot more of the stock components. You know, there's a lot of things that are just kind of left alone. Uh, 
Um, you really don't want to get into too many modifications because the whole point of the hooligan class is to let everybody in. It's really just a group of guys, um, a group of friends that get together and try to see who is the fastest on the track on any given day. It's not about winning or losing, it's really just about going out there and having fun. And that was Brandon Holstein, one of the many hooligan riders that's going to be taking the track here in the next hour. Very excited. Once again, I am Diana Dahlgren, and we are streaming live all over the world right now via Facebook Live. This is my handsome co-host, Lance Corey. How's it going out there? It's, it's, you know what? You're the one to tell us what's going on out there. So he's actually on Facebook Live right now. He's watching us. I see some languages that I can't understand. We got Harley. Philippines. Yep. Pat so, saying, wow, Alan, dream bike. What, yeah. Alan, I want to know what, what bike is Alan's actual dream bike right now? Yeah, so look at all the different languages and everyone tuning in from all over the world. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you give our broadcast a thumbs up for those of you who are tuning in. Those of you who are out in the crowd, hope this pre-show is going well for you before racing begins tonight. Now, uh, we have a lot on our pre-show. We do. We, we should get Checklist. rolling because we have a lot of guys we got to interview right now. That's right. One of your faves is next. Yep. That's right. Buddy Subtle, come on down. Unknown Industries. And now with up, Harley guys? Hooligan. Handshake from the official. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was a little nervous before you came on stage. So, <laughs> Buddy Subtle, um, how, how's it going? It's going good, having fun out here. Yeah? Ne I never rode concrete on the flat track bike, but I like it. Okay, so this is your second time with the hooligans, right? Yep, second race, uh, mm -hmm. second time I rode the bike, but I'm feeling good. That way, I'll, I got a question. How do you feel, though, against the guys that have been out there a couple years on this concrete? Yeah, there's a lot of guys have it down and it's super fast, and uh, I'm trying to play catch up right now, but uh, I'm, I'm liking it. Are you pretty comfortable with where you've qualified into tonight's semis? You think I'll, you're going to make the main event? I'm hoping. That's what I'm. If I make the main, I'll be happy. We we both want to know if you're out there in the main. Are you going to drag some fender on the track? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, like to. unknown style. Yeah, that, that fender's way back there, but uh, I'll see what I can do. If I win, I'm definitely doing a wheelie. Awesome. Well, you know, we have some team members of yours here, and. We're going to hold up on them, actually. Sorry, you guys hold there. We, we, want, we want to talk to Buddy a little bit more. So anyways, let's talk about Unknown and what you do when you're at home. And you're, you're still in Huntington Beach, right? Yep. Honey. I know a little bit about those <laughs> Unknown guys, those Unknown fellas. So tell us yeah, so, what's going on. I mean, we've been on the road. We started NASCAR already. So we're doing stunt shows for Monster Energy and NASCAR. And uh, yeah, so I've been on the road for 10 days already. And I came from Charlotte, and tomorrow I fly to Atlanta to do the second round of NASCAR. So, yeah, we're put on a smoke show for NASCAR, and uh, yeah, that's my main gig, and this is kind of like for fun, and I'm loving it. So, I mean, the both of you guys know what it's like. Us in action sports, we are so lucky to have careers in this. We have fun. I mean, it's not even work, right? We no, travel. You're right. Um, what is it like coming out to these events? I mean, you got asked to be on the hooligan. You're not even like a real flat tracker. I mean, that's not your background, right? Right, right. So uh, tell us, what is the transition like coming into this? And it's an honor for you, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bike the setup, you know, we're still figuring it out. And they're really heavy, and they don't want to turn. So it's crazy how fast some of these guys go, especially on the dirt tracks. And but. Is that Dr. Pepper syrup hooking up for you? Yeah, yeah, it was hooking up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I saw you on the start right there. You did a little test start, and right off the bat, you popped the clutch and yeah. launched the front yeah. end. I got to work on my starts. I, I, I saw a couple of those guys get, like, great starts, and I need to figure that out because I was, like, doing a wheelie and, like, going up. It's, it's hard. And I heard them in the, in the um, you know, in the meeting that we had. They said, oh, no, no 
practices for starts. Yeah, yeah. You snuck one in like as they were trying to get you off the track. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta get a tough. little practice. Yeah, they don't give you much practice out there. Right. Well, it's hard to get practice in when you're on the road as much as Buddy. I mean, let's talk about it. You're going to NASCAR. I can't hear you. Oh, you're going. Oh, so he can't hear me. Sorry. You're going to NASCAR, and uh, you're you're busy on the road. So what's next on the schedule for you? Yeah, like I said, tomorrow we fly to Atlanta to do NASCAR, and then I think we get like a two-week break, and then we go to Fontana, and then I think it's the next hooligan race for me. So, yeah, it's staying busy. Very busy, yeah. and but you know you got a two-week break. Hopefully, your teammates. Sean and Aaron Gordado. Hopefully, they're not really like my teammates, but well, I mean they're your hooligan teammates. <laughs> they're my friends. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't. They're my competitors. I'm sorry. You're unknown, or you're like oh, oh, your yeah, your teammates. Yeah. yeah. Yes, in your brothers. Anyways, oh, oh, we're saying hello. They're they're initiating you here into the hooligan family because we have a shirt, special oh, shirt for you. Dang. Who's that? I didn't Who's say with that. your number? Look at it. Even it's has the wrong the, number. It ha oh, oh, well, that's not my. <laughs> I still like it. I still like it. Okay, good. Well, we're gonna have to well, get we with them. You, we, we figured we'd put his birth year on there. Just <laughs> out here. Is that really your birth? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know I was that young. You're 91. No. no. <laughs> I'm He's like, 80 I'm something. What's I'm your birthday? 85. Yeah, 85. that's right. I'm like, I'm 90. There's no way, right? <laughs> okay. So, anyways, you guys freaking awesome to have you here because we were just at winter x games and we went through some um, amazing machines up on that snow hill climb uh how was winter x games for you guys winter x games was really cool you know we got to ride those snow uh street rods that was a, a pretty cool discipline and now you go from riding on the dirt to riding on pavement with some syrup and then we were riding on the snow it's kind of a weird situation but i think that is that's what we like to do, you know, riding a bike, riding a Harley, the, anywhere you can with your friends, cool, it makes more fun. And you guys, Lance got to ride the snow bike, you really wanted to ride it, you probably should have. I but, probably should have, I yeah. just didn't want to hurt it. Yeah, so, you know, it was, uh, it was a super cool opportunity, and now, uh, you know, after all that, we go back to work, prep some bikes, and come out and do some racing. Nice, nice. How do you guys feel out there in practice? Uh, track feels pretty good, you know, they got enough... They got the coke syrup on there, and then now that uh, we've been out there practicing laying down some rubber, uh, the track's really tacking up pretty good, so we're getting in there, and it'll be some pretty good close-action close, close action racing. Rad, rad. Are we going to see any three of you in the same heat race? Uh, I'm not sure. They haven't posted them yet, but... I don't know. Buddy I and so. I, maybe... I'm looking I'm looking for Buddy out there. Are you? you? Know, him and I, we've, we were on some tr practice back in uh, a couple years ago at Lake Paris. And I think he was trying to get off the track, and I was coming around the track, and he came around, and somebody he was took me out. Somebody oh. was upside down. You and, took him out. Somebody was upside down, and it wasn't me. So we might see that tonight. Is there going to be any like vengeance or? No, I don't know. We're Someone talking. already took a spill out there. Uh, yeah, that was you me. did. I was like, no. Is it you that's been crashing a lot? You crashed like last oh, weekend man. too. Yeah, I had a pretty rough get off in uh, Portland. Went over, you know, scorpioned off on my face, and I'm out here right now just. Trying to put down some laps. Yeah, I mean, sprint. Oh, you have a you have a cast on right now. Uh, show me. Really show me this cast. cast you know, yeah. It's more, more of a wrist brace. Temporary, you know, temporary cast. Yeah. And gotcha. And he's, then, he's he's good. He's you know, sometime last year he he fractured his tib or fib, one of those, one night, and then uh, the next race we go at Coda at big track circuit Americas, and he wasn't going to sit that thing out. And next thing you know, he's on the podium. he's on the podium with Joe Kopp. Roland Sands, and he took the third spot literally on crutches. So. And they're like, oh, what happened to you last night? He's like, well, last night I was pretty upside down, and the bike's upside down, and, you know, I think the last spill really, it put the bike down, so he's riding the new Street Rod 750 tonight. And That's hopefully. one of the best parts about action sports is that half of you guys show up broken to these events, that, and you're like, it doesn't matter. That's why they're hooligans. Yeah, that's we're going why. out. Talking about hooligans, we have this amazing feature getting to know the Gordado brothers better. If you guys are here watching right now, Facebook Live, make sure you keep on watching because right now we're going to get to know Aaron and Sean a little bit better. Thank you, guys. For us, I think it's, uh, it's unique in, in the fact that we can go to a race together, support one another, and if we're both on the front line, we're gonna ride together. You know, we have this sense of nonverbal communication. We don't even really need to look at each other, we just know what each other's thinking. I can be in his head and understand what he's doing, so I can make 
those crazy passes. Him, even if he doesn't know that I'm there, he's not gonna get startled. He's not gonna be thrown off by it. We're a team. We're also brothers. It's very cool, and you know, hopefully, other people see us as a team. But the other people that see us as brothers, they, you know, like, oh shoot, we better watch out because there's two of them. <laughs> For me, my biggest inspiration would be my dad. And I say that because he built his business from scratch, and that's something that we watched growing up. You know, he'd work unbelievably long hours while he still had another job. We watched our dad build his business, and although it is a different industry, the idea is the same. We're here building something and doing something that we love and genuinely are passionate about. Our shop being within my dad's location, you know, he sees us working. He wonders what we're doing. He knows we're here two, three, four in the morning. But I think this work is easier done having a brother here, having my dad here as a whole. And it makes the shop um, not, it's not the traditional shop at all. The Harley Hooligan series has grown exponentially in the past couple years. When we first started this, we would go out to places, Texas, Minneapolis, Florida, and all that, and we'd show up, and it was more of an exhibition type thing. You know, yeah, it's competition, yeah, it's racing, but, you know, we're out there talking to guys, answering all their questions, just basically being a good source of information for them and how they can become involved. going back to a place the following year and to see that not only have the fans grown, but the amount of people that are racing have grown. And I really do enjoy that, just watching the growth over the years and how much excitement that people get from it. Oftentimes, more so all the time, Sean's faster, um, but he also crashes most often or all the time, also. At most races, we'll talk back and forth, like, hi, I beat you here, I beat you there, but it doesn't really matter, you know, we're, we're both racing together. One of us goes down, we're the first to go stop. You know, I'll bail on a bike to get him back up and he'll do the same for me. When we come together on the track as a team, both of us, especially being brothers, we have that connection and we can almost use that to help one another. Racing seems like a very prestigious and unattainable thing, but what Harley's done with the series is allowed anybody to become a motorcycle racer. For those of you out there that want to race, you know, there's plenty of races all year long and you just see a date, see a time, and if I can't make it, you know, take one of our bikes. <laughs> you can ride one of ours. Back to our Flat Out Friday pre-race show. I am Diana Dahlgren, your host, here with my handsome co-host Lance Corey. What's going on world? That's right and we have our next guest here Mark Adkins. What's up everyone? That's right we are watching all over the world uh, hundreds of streams that are happening right now. That's right. Facebook live. We've yeah. been checking in on those comments. Loads of people are watching live right now as we scroll up and down we see all this good stuff happening. And your family is probably friends, family. My dad's watching. Is he watching yeah. on the Facebook Hi, Dad. Oh, For hi, sure. Dad. Yeah. There we go. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, so Mark, let's get to it. How are you feeling about tonight? Awesome. awesome. I'm ready. Are you ready? I put a lot of work into being here. This is the biggest event for me mm -hmm. of the entire year. I literally made a makeshift track that's identical to this at an Concrete. abandoned dairy. Concrete. Now, I put in work. Now I'm wait, ready. now wait. I've seen you win here. Yeah. 
And I also, one here too. I also saw you in the pits earlier today with your clutch completely out of your bike. I also break a lot of things, yes. Okay. I smoke my clutch. Okay, <laughs> so are we back and running? Yes. Uh, let, let's say thank you to Milwaukee Harley. Uh, they let me take a clutch basket out of, or a whole clutch plate set out of a brand new bike on the showroom floor. Right. So. The, abs the thing that I love most about Milwaukee is how many Harley dealerships are here. How amazing that they just gave back to the bike week, uh, the build, you know, all these events that are taking place this week and they're just like, whatever you guys need to do, you come in, you rule our dealership. It's amazing. That's just what I love about Harleys in general. I love traveling and knowing that in every town, there's Harley people, there's Harley shops, and they're always willing to help you. That's right. Honestly, the whole Milwaukee's all like this. Everyone's so nice to us as soon as we come in. I know, it's absolutely amazing. We're gonna be coming back here for the 115th anniversary. Are you gonna be here? I will be here shredding, wheelies, That's, everything. I know, yeah. it's a big part. It's always a great time here with Harley Davidson. So let's talk about your bike setup. Um, what is, are you running yellow frames? I hear. Yeah, I'm a. I like to be really bright, and uh, you know, there's a science behind the color yellow. It's the most attracting color to the human eye. So, you know, I obviously had to be a little extra. So, how I actually haven't seen the bike. You've seen the bike. I've how much yellow bike. are we talking here? So, this bike is a Street Rod 750, and it's got a yellow tank, yellow number plate, yellow fender. But uh, my favorite part is my new saddleman seat. It's Beetlejuice striped black and white. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. I love stripes, as you can tell. Yeah. So I'm really good at branding uh, Rusty Butcher, obviously. We shove it down everyone's throat. But our bike came out awesome, and I'm pretty stoked with it. If you had to put money on this man to win tonight, would you? I'd put money because I've seen him do it before, so I know it's possible. Well, can I put in way more work than that time. <laughs> I'm, I'm really gunning for it. Are you going to be? So we'll see. If you're going to be the first repeat winner, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you'll be the first one. Actually, there's been another dude who won. Benny uh, won two or two times too. Oh, okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, so we'll see what happens here. You got yep. the yellow. We got race yellow. We got black and white stripes going down. Yep. Lance, yep. do you have more questions for this man? Well, I know that uh, Mikey Virus. He's your teammate, right? Yes, Mikey's out there shredding. I saw him out there in the qualifiers. He won it's his a... heat, and I got second. Yeah, I, I shifted mean, it in neutral twice. But but you two <laughs> training together. Are you noticing that helping you or helping him? I always try to like take him out so like maybe his bike won't make it to the race or something but it seems to like make him do better than me every time so like the cement is where i shine and on dirt he always beats me now once he figured it out so i i don't know he did pretty damn good so i think he's gonna do awesome too Rad. hopefully there's a, a black and yellow podium at the end of the night Rad. well we are gonna see if mark lands on the podium or if he wins this thing here tonight if you guys are watching right now make sure you give a thumbs up to the broadcast that's happening right now give a thumbs up for mark here hopefully uh we'll see you tonight on the podium yep. and we're going to be taking a closer look right now rusty butcher stay tuned and take a look so i'm standing next to my 2017 street rod harley davidson uh we picked this thing up from san diego harley so i had hard case performance do me some shorties little stubbies they're about two inches tall and these are for I believe inch and an eighth bars which are moto style bars we use the vortex flat track band the tall like super wide bars for flat track I know they look crazy and like beach bars but they work so we always run the vortex on there and then hand guards I always run the cycra hand guards which I honestly think these ones are discontinued so we've been buying them up but uh, they have a new version of this that works too but I really like the older style so that's how our handlebar setup is, and I topped it off with an ASV lever, which is basically just for looks on the 750s. They bolt right on the clutch cable, the ferrule that goes on there fits right onto ASV, and this was a really easy setup. So that's our handlebars. And next up to get the flat track stance, we did a 19 inch front wheel. This is basically a 19 inch, I guess, Street Bob Dyna Sportster front rim with 25 mil bearings. I put uh, no brakes on it for flat track. We're not allowed to run brakes. I know it's crazy, but um, topped it off with a Shinko tire and then 25 mil axle. It fits the bearings that are on this and it kind of bolts it right on if you have 25 mil spacers laying around. But uh, no brakes, 19 inch front wheel, flat track Shinko tire. And then I found this random yellow number plate on eBay, threw it on there. Kind of like the little vent look of it. Kind of gives it a different look than I normally run. But um, that pretty much is it for the front end forks are stock I did nothing to them did nothing to the trees and then I just mounted my speedo and that literally completes the whole flat track 750 front end
Next up, we headed to the rear end, and I hit up my buddy's Fox to send us a set of Rusty Butcher Edition Fox shocks. Um, these are 14 inches tall, pretty much standard bolt-on stuff, but um, you can get them at a Fox dealer. So for these 750s, uh, not many people make a like race-style exhaust that everyone likes the normal just two in the ones. So we ended up cutting the collector off and going to TBR, and they hooked me up with a tip right here, and we had this thing custom mounted. But it's stock headers with a TBR carbon tip on here. Sounds really awesome. And then from there, we head over to the air cleaner. And s, &S Cycle hooked us up with a new mini teardrop. It's got all the vents so it could breathe really good. So they sell those for the street rods as well. So on the rear wheel situation on this, we ended up doing 19 rear, which is normal flat track. Uh, we ended up doing a lintel rotor and lintel pads on this thing, topped with a Shinko tire. So on the back, we got the billet chain adjusters from Big Al the low brow sprocket for the chain drive, and then top it off with some Biltwell little rubber uh, Norman Bates foot pegs, and that's pretty much our tracker. And wishing luck to Mark Adkins. Maybe we'll see a repeat winner out there. But anyways, we are back. I am Diana Dahlgren, Lance Corey. And once again, we are on Facebook Live with our next two guests, Scott Johnson, Warren Heyer. Hi. How you guys doing? I'm great. How are you guys I'm doing? fantastic. Great. Well, you guys are all suited up. You're ready to go tonight. But let's talk a little bit about background. We were just chatting before we came back. And I think it's pretty amazing that you guys pretty much came up with the flat out Friday. Well, we didn't invent syrup racing, but we feel like we did a pretty good job of reviving the spirit of it. So we're yeah. pretty into that. Oh but my. yeah, put a little put a little fun into it, a little excitement, get people pumped up rather than just kind of watch people run in circles. We get to, you know, yell, scream, hoot, and holler. It's I think one cool thing that like I'm digging is that you guys are so involved in making this happen and you're in your gear right now because <laughs> I know it takes so much work to Dude. make this happen. Yeah. yeah, it's always game time too. Like I never know if I'm in the right headspace to do it. And this last year I sat out this year. I'm like, I got to get out there. I mean, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we always get our bikes here. and We get all of our gear here. We get registered, but we don't know until the last minute if we're even going to do it. We didn't yeah, do any right. practice at all. So Stressing, just, running yeah. around. Yeah, but it's, man, it's, it's a lot. It's smiling a lot. And ready yeah. to go. So how did the concept, how did this this little seed in your brain start flat out Friday? How did this all come about? Walk us through it. It was Proc. Jeremy Proc came to us. We have a show called Mama Tried, which okay. happens at the same time. Yes. And Jeremy's a local promoter. He's been into flat track for years as a son that's been doing forever. And he's like, man, let's have a race during the week or during that same, that Friday night. And he approached him like, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great idea. It's a great thing to add to the show. A Friday night event, so people coming into town, it's like the whole thing just gets started right off the bat. And we weren't sure if people were going to be into it or not, but it Seems caught to be on. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, and you said you don't know people. What was the attendance the first year? It was around 6,000, so that's pretty good. We, and, and now look at what you've grown to. I mean, yeah, look yeah, at it's, it. It's, we're doing it's a pre-show for Flat Out Friday. <laughs> I know, I know. It's pretty great. Yeah. I mean, we we kind of figured we were onto something when we opened up registration, and registration for riders filled up right away. Yeah. And that was with no nobody knew what Flat Out Friday was yeah. or what we were about. Um, yeah, they're and, chomp, chomping at the bit. Yeah. So the we, next day, the registration opens. Jeremy's mailbox is full. It's crazy. It so that so was something that we hadn't anticipated. We kind of felt like we'd have to go out there and sell it. You know, it'd be like. It's, it's a different kind of racing. It's flat track, but it's not on dirt. Mm -hmm. It's not a cushion track. It's a syrup racing, and but people are all about it from the beginning. Yeah. Believe so. it or not, it might be a little hard to talk some of these old coots into doing something a little bit different. Well, <laughs> what I want to know is what class are you guys racing? What? Who should I be looking for out there? We're both racing in brakeless class. Yeah. Brakeless. Going up against each other. No yeah. brakes, front no or brakes. rear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't need them out there. So you're slowing <laughs> down with just chopping the throttle. Yeah. 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 That's right. the way it used to be. Pre-1975 or something like that, it was there There was no brakes that were allowed in flat track racing at all. But so. I don't think they were racing on syrup tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might have been, but uh, it's really fun, actually. It's we so were, much fun. Yeah, we have old Harleys. 
I have a 42. Mine's a 39. Wow. So yeah. they're Vintage. really a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. So l let's talk about the syrup. We got the Dr. Pepper syrup out there this weekend. How is the Dr. Pepper working out for you guys? It's oh, great. wait, you know what? You haven't even practiced yet. So you haven't even. Well, we, we got just, to do oh, our heat. We just you got just to do our heat. Just yeah. before this and, and how'd you guys do real we, quick? We were in separate heats and we both got second. Yeah. So Does that let you in? a grudge match when yeah. we get back out there. All right, you guys are in the main. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. in. All right, yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Front row. All right, so what is what are we looking forward uh, for all the viewers that are watching? We have loads and loads and loads of channels right now that are watching. What do they get to look forward tonight for Flat Out Friday, especially for those that are new to Flat Out Friday? Well, the cool thing about Flat Out Friday, it's it's not just bikes going around in a circle. There's there's more of a show to it. Jeremy really puts on a great show, runs like clockwork. He's got a great crew, but it's everything from the old bikes like we have to the pros to mini bikes and inappropriate. mopeds. Inappropriate. So there's going to be choppers and baggers and... Yeah, pizza it, delivery bikes and breaks up the monotony, you know. And everybody's trying so hard out there, and you can see that everybody's racing. It's real racing. There's classes. People get cut. You get in the heat. You won't make it. You won't may not make it to the main. So it's exciting. People are crashing, and you know it's just a fast, fun, furious, like exciting thing. Right. And so, the thing for people at home to that probably don't understand is that during the day they're running heats all day long. Yeah. So, no. so they can. What they're seeing is just the best. All the, the all the qualifying's been done, so it's all the best people on the front line. Yeah, I think there's 260 bikes back there. No, it's incredible. You guys are packed through the hallways. <laughs> there's people and bikes everywhere, everywhere. in yeah. the pits, in basically. Yeah. yeah. I know when I'm walking through forward and back, I really want to ride either the moped or the boonie bikes yeah. or the grom. I want to ride something fun out there. Yeah. yeah. What about the donut police? <laughs> Our, you know, is that the pink one? Yeah. The shorts. Well, no, no, there's no, a pink no. one, and then there's a white one with yeah. donuts. It says yeah. like the donut police. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's got like tight, tight khaki shorts on. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I mean, looking at where we're at right here, look, the, the the hallways are flooded. People are going upstairs. You walk through the tunnel, you know, and hopefully we'll get to show you guys that soon. I mean, it's just stacked with bikes. You guys would have never imagined this a few years ago. No. What are your dreams? What is the vision for Flat Out Friday in the years to come? Uh, we just want to have a good time. We just want people that are coming here to be, to, who are fans and spectators, to have a good time, and the racers to have a good time. And without them, we wouldn't have a show. We yeah. wouldn't have a race. And we want to make it as fun as possible for them and as easy as possible. I mean, I give them a lot of credit that you saw how jammed it was back there. There's, there's not room for your 10 by 10 and your toolboxes and your gas cans. You got to go fill up your gas outside. It's not easy. Yeah, it's and not at all. You know, you got to get here early, and it's a long day, and so it's it's all about the racers, really. I mean, those guys and girls are the ones that are doing, like, really putting on the show, and yeah. it's all about them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we want to give a big round of applause. Those of you guys that are already out in the atrium, give a big round of applause for these guys. Warren yeah. Heyer, Scott Johnson. For those of you watching, make sure you give a big thumbs up to our live broadcast right now. This is it for the pre-show, you guys. You, right. guys, were right. the, you guys were the grand finale. All right. So we're, Let's we're, this. we are wrapping up, and in 10 minutes, your guys' races start. So if you guys are going to be tuning in, make sure you stay here. 10 more minutes to go, and we're going to be seeing some flat-out Friday bar-banging racing. We're going <laughs> there. All right.